live. Hello everyone. Uh, sorry for the slightly delayed start. Uh, we uh, seem to be under volunteered for this session, but I think we probably can get going at this point. Uh, I'm Sean. I'm the chair of the Debian Technical Committee. Everyone else here in the call, who hopefully you can see on the right hand side, are the other members of our fine committee. Um, this is our annual talk. I'm just going to briefly introduce uh, the technical committee, just a few uh, key facts that uh, will frame what we actually want to talk about, which is changes to the committee. Uh, so uh, thank you, uh, Gunnar. Hopefully you can all now see a list of the current committee members. At the end, there's a, there's a rotational uh, system. There's some complicated rules in the constitution about how people join and leave the committee. And I believe if memory serves that this year, David and Marga will, their terms will finish on um, the last day of the year. Mm -hmm. And so we'll be looking to recruit to replace those two positions uh, at some point in the next four months, I guess. Get the next slide. Uh, thank you. Uh, here are just just for interest the former members of the technical committee. Uh, we would particularly like to thank Phil Hans, who just finished his term at the end of last year. Uh, very valuable uh, input to all the discussions that we had on the TC. So, uh, what exactly is the technical committee? Well, uh, these are the things that we can do, basically. Uh, so we can make decisions uh, on technical matters, right? Uh, so when there's a decision to be made about whether Debian is going to, you know, uh, do X or do Y, and there's a situation in which it's not just, it's not obvious whose decision that is, or p the multiple people whose decision it is can't reach a consensus, then the TC can make the decision so that things can move forward. That's essentially uh, what it is. It's a last resort decision-making facility that the constitution provides for when our normal ways of making decisions have failed uh, for whatever reason. The other thing that we can do uh, under 6.1.5 is offer advice. So the idea is that, you know, if if the TC is the body of people who can make decisions when people can't agree, then presumably, like as a body, they might have something to useful to say when people are just in the process of agreeing, right? And that's actually something we'd like to talk about in more detail today. So that's the other thing that we can do. We can offer advice and people can ask us to offer it and we discuss it and we come up with some kind of uh, statement about what we think. Um, the constraints on the TC are like quite uh, precise as compared with other parts of Debian because they're all written down in the constitution. Uh, so in particular, we have to do everything in public, although we're going to talk a bit more about what exactly that means today. Um, we can't do detailed design work. So a good example of this is user merge. So right now on Debian Devel, there's some hashing out going on of some of the details of the transition to merged user. And the TC made a decision that's relevant there, but we didn't do that hashing out, right? We only do as much hashing out as we have to. I think the point of this is that like the TC is meant to unstick things when, when it's not clear who's to decide basically, or, and then other people do the hashing out. And that's, uh, that's the thought behind that. And we're only meant to make decisions as a last resort. So as the slides say here, it's a matter of breaking ties when everything else has been tried and failed. Okay, um, so uh, I think that's the last, yes, here's a summary of what I just said. Uh, the TC is self-nominated, DPL appointed, a last resort body uh, in terms of conflict resolution and the providing of advice. Okay, so the, I'm now going to hand over to Alana. So the, as we discussed at last year's talk, um, the TC recognizes some ways in which we're not as effective and useful as perhaps we could be. And so we have two proposals that we would like to engage in discussion on for the rest of the talk about how to be more useful, essentially. Um, so our first proposal 
to discuss that, I'll hand over to Ilana. Great, thank you. So um, uh, I've got a bit of an echo that might be coming for you, Sean. Yes, great. Uh, so allowing for private communication when communicating with the technical committee. So given that the technical committee is a last resort, this often means that things come to us as escalations. And sometimes you don't want to hash out every single nitty gritty detail in public because that could make matters worse. Uh, you might want to be able to give advice, which is a thing that we want to do. The, the thing that we are required to do that we should do uh, without like necessarily, uh, you know, that uh, escalating matters, flaming, uh, fanning flames, that kind of thing. Uh, so uh, next slide, please. Uh, so we have some expectations around like how people will engage the technical committee privately, given the constraints in the Constitution. Uh, you know, we don't want to make decisions privately. That would be inappropriate. Uh, but there are some matters that make sense uh, to come to the technical committee. And so uh, anybody engaging with the technical committee privately acknowledges and must acknowledge before they do this that we can't and we will not make those decisions privately. Uh, so if then we need to go and uh, like make a decision and publish some rationale for that decision, uh, it has to be stated publicly. Anything discussed in private can't be used as some sort of basis of rationale if we make a decision. Uh, so what should people reach out to us privately for? Like when would this make sense given that we can't make decisions in private? Well, somebody might want advice on how to handle potentially controversial technical matters. Like they don't necessarily want like, well, you know, what decision should I make or what what proposal should I have? But just like, how do I how do I handle this situation? You know, what things should I say? Might this make it worse? Might this make it better? Um, so uh, in in that sort of vein, uh, assistance with de-escalating a technical conflict. Uh, we also want to be able to help folks with uh, the public presentation of a technical argument. So someone might reach out to the technical committee privately and say like, hey, uh, I, you know, I think that this is true, but maybe English is not my first language, or maybe I don't really understand how to communicate this to this person that I'm having an argument with because, you know, that, that person, uh, like, there's high tension and uh, they don't seem to agree with any of these points, but I think they're reasonable. You know, can you can you help me build a stronger argument or present this more effectively? So that's a thing that we can do and potentially other things. Uh, this is not an exhaustive list. So uh, how would one raise an issue in such a fashion? Uh, well, you can send an email to the technical committee's private mailing list. And uh, then we will ensure that anything discussed privately uh, will remain private by default. We won't publicize anything that's discussed there. Uh, if we want to propose uh, the sharing of something publicly, uh, we will first send that text to everyone and get their consent to say like, okay, this is what we would like to publish based on what you've discussed with us. Uh, can we go and uh, make that live? Uh, and if, if uh, yes, then uh, we will go ahead and publish it. If not, then we won't. I think that's basically the gist of that. Great. Okay. Uh, thank you, Alana. So our other proposal that we wanted to discuss in detail today um, is about invoking the technical committee early. So Gunnar is going to give us a summary of that, and then we're going to open it up to Q&A. Right. Okay. So what's the problem we're trying to solve with this second uh, proposal? Sometimes uh, 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 it, it's hard to know whether a, a, an issue uh, deserves uh, being brought to the technical committee. We have the, uh, we collectively, the Debian developers, we have the uh, image, we have the idea of the technical committee being really, really a la last resort uh, body. And well, yeah, that's in the constitution, right? The thing is we don't want uh, social relations within the project to suffer, to, deter uh, to deteriorate, and, uh, uh, and they often do for, uh, for the discussions that uh, end up in our hands. What we want to do is to make it easier to get involved early. Uh, when people call the technical committee for, for uh, their uh, help, for their mediation, usually uh, uh, the situation has uh, descended into the flame war stage already, and it's late for friendly mediation. So uh, we should, uh, let me get out of the picture for a bit. Uh, 
uh, what we uh, what we think we have to do is that we we must uh, have a way for the technical committee to step in without it being nuclear without it being the last resort option however we are bounded by how the constitution uh, defines us uh, as i said we are defined as a last resort body uh, so if you think there's an issue that uh, might warrant uh, the involvement of an external set of uh, developers not not inside your team or not not inside two teams that have opposing views please uh, keep in mind you you can come to the technical committee earlier uh, as early as you can uh, it, it is uh, written here that uh, we are last resort however uh, the constitution and the, the emphasis is there allows us to offer advice uh, so we find this to be a, a good like a loophole allowing us to intervene uh, earlier uh, uh, problems can be brought to the technical committee be be before they are at a last uh, last resort stage right uh, but the thing is uh, uh, we need you we need a a each developer to bring the issues to us uh, earlier we cannot uh, monitor everything we do not know how everything is going to unfold mm -hmm. uh, we cannot just uh, uh, invade your decision processes and uh, say well we are the uh, technical committee and we want to rule on this we have to uh, get the issues delivered to us so please uh, remember you can uh, ask for an opinion maybe uh, uh, before things uh, deteriorate uh, badly uh, the thing, one of the things with this is that the technical committee has a process uh, we, uh, where, which we usually follow, uh, which takes a long time. And it's sometimes hard to imagine how can the technical committee become timely, become uh, agile in, their decision, in our decisions. The thing is we, we have, a, well, the mailing list as our main communication and we have a monthly uh, meeting uh, where we discuss uh, but sometimes we don't need a formal decision by the technical committee. Sometimes we, rough consensus would be enough. And if we, we discuss uh, uh, informally a topic among us uh, do, during a meeting or even between the meetings uh, of a month, that may be a, a good signal for, for the rest of the, the developers that are part of a, an a, a issue installation. To, to feel how the technical com committee would rule about this. Mm -hmm. So, uh, although formally we always uh, have used a report bug to contact us, we want this to be simpler. We want, we want to streamline. We want to, to make it easier for the developers to, to ask for the technical committee's uh, opinions. Uh, uh, so, so you can even ask, for example, on, on the technical committee to, to take a look at an issue and try to summarize the, 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 the points. And you have seen that in the ongoing debate uh, on, on use, uh, user merge, right? That we have uh, reported on, uh, on the, the different uh, uh, sets of uh, uh, ideas that have brought this part and this part. And, and what's our view on that, right? Uh, uh, we can also like be representatives if you ask the technical committee uh, uh, for help on uh, as, uh, as Alana said if you are not very fluent uh, in English well some of us uh, may be able to better state your problems or, or your points of view uh, of course uh, we, we are just proposing this we don't have much uh, history on how to do this and as uh, as we go on, we want to get this documented. So uh, we are also asking for help to to well uh, to establish how we can work about this. Um, we want to move faster. We want to be a, a, a better answering body within the project. And well, uh, to uh, to that point, we are offering several contact uh, points. Uh, please do get in touch with the uh, technical committee without thinking it's uh, it's such a big deal without overthinking it right if you have an issue come to us ask us and uh, if there's nothing to say we will not say 
<laughs> and they, well, that's, that's basically the, uh, the, the part of the presentation about this proposal. So, Sean, I will give you back the, the speaker. Thank you, Nat. That was great. Um, so, we do have a question on the pad, but first I thought, is there anyone on the committee in the call who had any comments to make based on you know, thoughts that came to them while we were hearing <laughs> our own presentation or things that they had thought they might want to say? Well, yeah, so I, um, one thing I mentioned in one of our meetings was uh, regarding timeliness, uh, because it has been one of the problems of the committee that it's too slow and that uh, if there's an issue that requires uh, a timely response, uh, bringing it to the committee, even if it's just to ask for advice, might not end up giving the result that the person that brings the issue wants. Um, and so I had suggested having some kind of process uh, that would make it easier, more lightweight, and uh, basically have someone take on the issue and then that someone acting as a developer that is a member of the technical committee and not like in the voice of the technical committee uh, would like offer their advice and then um, if necessary they would consult the committee. Uh, we discussed this briefly but I, I wanted to hear like if there are strong opinions here and also what the audience would think of, of this model um, of like, so like if you're a developer bringing an issue to the technical committee early, so it's not like the last resort, it's in the offer advice uh, category, would you feel comfortable having like some kind of, um, we had found a better word than delegate when we discussed this, uh, but like a, like a mentor from the technical committee assigned to you and um, knowing that it's not like for certain this will be the decision of the technical committee. And now I will shut up. Uh, it sounds like Ilana and Simon have a response to that. Ilana, would you like to go first? Yeah, sure. I just wanted to add that like this is not something that necessarily needs to be super formal or something that's sort of come out of nowhere with no precedent. Uh, so an example of this actually happening was uh, some folks from Upstream Python reached out to me, uh, knowing me both from the Python community and uh, as a member of the technical committee, and they had some concerns in terms of how like Python was being packaged in Debian and how distributions manage Python. Uh, and so I came to the TC and I said, hey, this is happening. Uh, you can read about it in our uh, minutes from our meetings. Uh, and sort of how that has gone is uh, we now have like, say, a new Python 3 full package that addresses some of the concerns about splitting Python that folks had upstream. And uh, we're also working on a PEP, uh, which we just submitted this week. So this is a big group of people, it's not just me, uh, but me being involved uh, sort of on behalf of the TC, but not quite, this hasn't been escalated to the TC. This is trying to ensure that all the right things happen first, so nothing gets escalated to the technical committee. Uh, so now we have a PEP, PEP 668, uh, to handle some of the like, maybe pip should not break distro Python sort of concerns that don't just affect Debian, but other distributions. Uh, I ran a, a session at um, PyCon. And so uh, like that has, I think, worked out pretty positively. Uh, and uh, that, you know, n nobody came to the TC initially and said like, please assign me a person. It was more like people seeking me out uh, I expect that probably in similar matters in other spheres, uh, somebody may say like, hey, uh, Gunnar, you're the expert on such and such. Uh, please help uh, with this thing because, you know, this is broken and we need to fix it. Right, right. Um, uh, that was a great example. Um, Marga, do you want to connect that with what you just said or shall I hand over to Simon here? I, I was basically advocating for having this be a little bit the modus operandi. So I think that went really well and I would like more issues to go like that. Okay, cool. 
All right, uh, Simon. So I've actually been on both sides of the technical committee process recently because uh, as well as being on the technical committee, um, I asked the technical committee for advice on a um, difficult, weird bug I was having with glib um, related to the slash user merge, in fact. Um, and that was noticeably less contentious than a request to overrule anyone. Um, and I think, um, it, I, I don't think it, it ended up with any sort of formal resolution because we didn't need one. Um, which also meant it was a, a much lighter weight process. Um, because we didn't need to wait for having a formal vote on um, what to tell me as questioner. It was just, well, some people think this. Um, take this advice or don't, it's your call. Um, I guess a thought that occurs to me is uh, I think both of these examples uh, were great outcomes, obviously, um, but I think that they pretty much fall under how the committee is, has always worked, right? It's always been possible to approach individuals. And in these, uh, in Alana's case, Alana self-assigned herself and it was, it was perfect. Everything worked out. I guess the question is, do we want to have anything more formal than that, right? Do we want to have a name for this, uh, delegate. Um, it's really hard to think of something else. Uh, do we do we want to have an, a, a set of expectations? Or do we think we can just be more proactive about, you know, uh, going out and, and doing it? Um, that That's that's the question. Uh, procedurally, it might also be good to like, again, document expectations of whatever that person on the technical committee uh, is doing uh, in like such a sort of like invoked early situation. Uh, so for example, with the, the Python stuff that I was working on, there was no detailed design work on my part. I was uh, effectively like facilitating through and through uh, on the Debian side, like all of that work was done by uh, Doko, Matias, uh, and uh, Stefano uh, Tumbleweed and uh, Jeffrey Thomas, uh, who is not a Debian developer, but has uh, contributed to the project, wrote the PEP. Uh, and so uh, many other folks uh, from the upstream Python community and from other distros. And I mostly was just showing up and being like, okay, everybody, uh, like, who do we need to have in the room? Uh, how do we keep moving forward? What are the next steps that we need to take? Uh, it was very much not a like, you know, uh, I am going to give you all of my great ideas for how this should be done. Uh, although I did give some feedback in terms of like, well, well, this doesn't work and this doesn't work and we do have these constraints. So what if we did blah, blah, blah. Uh, so uh, maybe like that would be useful to write down uh, or at least like, you know, have some formal expectations in terms of what that sort of TC delegate or whatever you want to call them uh, is going to do in such a situation. That's a great point. In particular, you mentioned that you weren't doing detailed design work. So I guess maybe the first thing to write down would be that this delegate never does things the whole committee wouldn't do. It, it sounds obvious, but like if, if, it, if it's going to be a thing, then at least we would want to write that down. Okay. That, that seems like a, a good thing to take away. Um, if there aren't any more hands, perhaps we should move on to the two questions that we have on the pad. Um, so the hmm. Simon has a hand. Oh, Simon. Uh, uh, I I've I've been asked to bring something up. Um, when when we have when we have a moment as well. Okay, great. Uh, so I'll put. We've got two questions on the pad. So let's spend a few minutes on each of those and then um, do do your item. Uh, okay. So the first item that we've got is, if resorting to the TC is seen as a last resort option, how feasible would it be to have a mediation board to handle conflicts before they get to that point? So this was actually one of our proposals that we set aside. Um, I think, uh, sorry to put you on the spot, Marga, I think you know I'm going to do it. Marga was uh, initially driving that proposal and then she thought that we ought to put it aside. So perhaps you could summarize why. Sure. 
Uh, so uh, the proposal was to have some formally delegated body that would handle mediation that uh, when we discussed this, we said it could be the technical committee, but it could also be the community team, or it could be some new uh, team in Debian that would be like the mediation team. And I, I basically decided, I don't know, I, I changed my mind uh, regarding this being necessary uh, after seeing how well the Python thing went. Uh, so my feeling was like, we, we don't really need a mediation body. We just need people to know who to talk to. Right. And, uh, this having the expert that can help you along. And the problem is that it's not always going to be the same expert. Uh, so. I think one of the issues that the technical committee has been dealing with is lack of trust. So if developers that are, if developers are in conflict and they don't trust us to take the right decision, uh, it won't help. Like we will not be able to mediate because they don't trust us. And so what we need is people that are trusted. And that's why I thought, okay, if we have a delegated mediation body, but they are not trusted, it will also not work. We need to earn their trust. And I think the technical committee can do it, but it can do it if we earn the trust of the developers. And I think that that's kind of like the, the key issue. Um, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the model that we are proposing today, uh, with the, um, bringing the issues early and also being able to talk to us in private when, when people don't feel comfortable. I think these two changes can actually work towards the TC being a mediation body in the issues where it's relevant and slowly earning the trust of the developers back. I think there is a certain amount of conflict between um, our role as decision makers of last resort and um, the idea that we are mediators. Because if we're making a, de a decision as the last resort, the project can't, ag can't agree we need a decision um someone is always going to be disappointed with that decision yeah two pe two people don't agree we have to pick one or neither um and that doesn't necessarily go particularly well with being able to like help help people communicate without putting our own opinions and our own points of view in Uh, you know? Yeah, I think this uh, this point and uh, bri uh, bridges uh, what what Simon just said bridges to the to the other question that that was open when we started discussing this topic. Uh, uh, as as I said, well, uh, as we said in the slides, and I have to credit uh, Phil for most of the work he did that I presented. Uh, he did uh, those points before. Uh, well, uh, graduating from the committee, uh, uh, getting involved earlier is uh, taking advantage of a loophole uh, that allows us to be uh, uh, dually defined as a last resort, but uh, but uh, allows to to to, to give uh, opinions. And the, the the question that would follow now is that uh, whether we feel that the project needs more technical committee involvement, and I think. It, uh, it binds to this uh, same question because, uh, of course, it would be great if there was no need for uh, DC involvement ever, but there is. And, uh, well, we, we, we need a body that's able to, uh, to defuse situations before they explode, before we have social damage within the project. And that, that's, uh, I mean, getting a speedier uh, technical committee, getting us to uh, 
reply earlier and better would be great and we need to get involved early uh, before uh, people who hate each other before we get to 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 terrible uh, uh, positions as we have seen repeatedly so the only way uh, i think and i think many of us uh, feel that way is a uh, being able to to get involved earlier we don't need more we don't want more involvement but we want to have a body that can that can step in early when needed uh Ilana? yeah so i just wanted to address a couple of things that were said the the first i really don't think this is a loophole i think it explicitly says in the constitution we're supposed to give advice um but uh furthermore i i don't think that that giving of advice uh, or like being engaged early versus being uh, a sort of last resort is in conflict in any way. Uh, I spent many years working as a site reliability engineer, as a systems administrator. And one of the sort of key things in operations is like, you can't really measure the number of things that did not blow up, but you're the person who's on call. Like you're going to get paged when, you know, there is a thing that happens, there's an incident. Uh, and so you want to make sure that you're able to handle those incidents well when they happen. But like, ideally, you don't want the incidents to happen at all. And uh, these are sort of two sides of the same coin. They're the same job in some uh, to some degree. And one of these things is much less stressful than the other, preventing the incidents from ever happening in the first place versus like responding to something being on fire at three in the morning. Uh, and so like. I see the technical committee in sort of a similar way. If we can avoid things getting to the point of there are two sides and we have to pick one uh, versus like, you know, engaging a little bit earlier and helping individuals see like, okay, but like, you know, this person is interested in this and this person is interested in that and these are the technical constraints and how can we find like some level of compromise before this becomes here's option one, here's option two, there is no middle ground, like, you know, flamey situation, everybody is, somebody walks away uh, feeling upset. Uh, I, I think that like, you know, that's the, the giving advice, the engaging early enables us to prevent, like inevitably, you know, there's always going to be something that uh, potentially uh, results in a conflict, which does need final resolution. Uh, but like, ideally you want that to be, uh, like the, the operations, uh, mantra is you want, uh, to fail fast and to reduce the impact of like those failures. So we want those, uh, decisions to be, you know, lower stakes, uh, and like maybe they happen, but like, they're not nearly as heated. Uh, and so I would say, I think that's what our goals should be as a committee. Yeah, that, that's a helpful analogy, I guess. I mean, obviously people are not um servers uh but the problems given that the problems are technical like there's a certain sense in which they are in the way that you described uh that's that seems like a useful analogy i guess i guess simon raised the idea that there's a a conflict between mediation and decisions of last resort and i guess there is and it's just one of the things that we have to navigate right um that would be uh and and the analogy, the analogy helps with that understanding that process of navigation. Okay, uh, so the, ne the next question that we have, um, perhaps if people would like to address it directly is from uh, DDA. He asks, Does any, do we feel that the project needs more TC involvement? I think Gunnar expressed yes. Um, do others have something to say directly in response to that? Okay. Yeah, Simon. I think. Um, I mean, to to an to an extent, we're we're the sort of people who 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 try to help discussions along anyway, um, because you don't get nominated to the technical committee otherwise. I would hope. Um, so when 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 we're sort of acting less formally it's maybe different it's maybe harder to draw a line between like simon as technical committee member and simon as interested developer uh 
there's a, a relevant comment on IRC from Phil uh, that perhaps is worth talking about. So Phil says, well, perhaps uh, perhaps the person who is assigned either informally or formally as the facilitator, the TC facilitator for the case, could recuse themselves if things really blew up, right? If it became one of our uh, most severe conflicts. Um, that makes sense. Perhaps that's one of the things that we could write down uh, under the facilitator role. I think maybe that goes with the facilitator having to be someone who doesn't already have a strong opinion on the particular thing being discussed. Right. Uh, I mean, it would be a, it would be a piece. It would be a guideline. It wouldn't be that they would have to recuse themselves, but just they ought to ask themselves whether they ought to, if, uh, and, you know, I mean, we all, I guess one of the things that we trust TC members to do is to know when they have a strong opinion about something and not mm. to, not to allow that to just go directly into a vote, right? We, I think we already trust each other not to do that. So maybe we ought to uh, make that explicit for this facilitator role, not in like a, you have to recuse yourself, but as a guy, you've got to ask yourself that question, but it seems like uh, worth writing down. Um, unless there's another hand on this point, uh, perhaps we could move on to the issue that Simon had been uh, asked to raise by someone. All right, um, go ahead, Simon. Yeah, so um, this, is, this is kind of the opposite of the lighter weight process idea. Um, I um, had, a, had a suggestion on IRC from, I think, I think it was from Adrian Bunk, um, that um, in, when, we, when we have to make a, a formal decision in our decision of last resort role, instead of making a decision and voting for, on it among ourselves, the suggestion was that we should instead be um, proposing a GR that is that encapsulates our decision as a as a kind of consensus check. I'm not sure I'm... I understand. It's instead of us voting, asking all of the developers to vote. So let's take. Um, merged user as an example, just because it's a thing that's come up relatively recently and, and is fresh in our minds. Um, the suggestion is that instead of um, having our, our decision on uh, merged user be a thing that we voted on formally among ourselves and announced as a decision, the suggestion was that we should instead have taken effectively the thing we voted on and put it up as a GR for the developer body as a whole to vote on. I'm kind of skeptical about this myself because I think it seems like a way of making sure that everything is heavier weight and more contentious than it otherwise would be. Um, but I wanted to bring it up and see what everyone else thought rather than just just dismissing it um uh, yeah. go ahead Margaret. Uh, christoph oh sorry i'm oh, sorry uh well christoph hasn't said anything yet so how about you go first okay yeah thank you um yeah i, I think it does make sense to have this as an option so uh let's say in the average uh, tc case um, there's really to choose between A and B in a quote minor technical issue. And it, it doesn't make sense to escalate that to the whole project. But for something that is affecting like everyone, maybe user merge, maybe system B, maybe something else, uh, it might make sense to just draw the consensus of the whole project. So. It might, I think it makes very much sense to have as an option, but I think it would be quite rare to, to actually pull that option. So it's, it's, I like the idea, but uh, I don't think it would ha be happening uh, very often. Uh, 
So uh, Nico is someone else who hasn't said much, so let me hand over to you. Sure, just wondering what the committee's role would be in that, like crafting the option options for the vote mainly, I guess, or doing the research and all. Well, I guess that's those. Would that be design work? Yeah, there's a kind of slippery slope, I guess. That's a great point. That's a great point. Um, we could only do it if, you know, writing a resolution didn't involve design work. Uh, Marga? Yeah, I was going to raise the same point that uh, Didier raised on IRC that uh, doing SGR is a lot of time spent by all of the DDs, right? All of the Debian developers need to read up on this and vote and well, maybe not all of them, but whoever takes the time to actually vote. Um, like it's a lot of time of the whole developer body. So I think it's okay to keep it in mind as a, as an option and maybe say when we are not sure and when it is a decision that will affect the majority of the developers, then maybe it's a good idea to do such a thing. But I think it would be like, it should be the exception and not the rule. Okay, uh, we do have one more question in just a couple of minutes. So uh, if you, so I think Simon and Lana have more to say on this one. Could you keep it brief? Thank you. Uh, Ilana, you go first. Uh, yeah, I can go super quick. Uh, I feel like there's already a mechanism for this if we need to invoke like uh, uh, the whole project. If the TC makes a decision and developers don't like it, there's an appeal process which then goes to a vote of the whole project. So uh, like that exists already. So I don't know if we need a new thing where the technical committee is just like, yeah, let's have a vote without even talking to us. Right, good point, good point. Uh, Simon? Yep. Uh, yeah, similarly, um, if at any time we think this is necessary, any of us as DDs can propose that GR if we want to. And equally, if anyone thinks that we should have done, but we didn't, they can propose a GR if they want to. So it's not like, like an opportunity has been lost here by us not doing that. Right. Good. Okay. Uh, uh, sorry, Christoph. We would be uh, skipping the framework in between between us deciding and the GR if we put it forward ourselves. Maybe that's just nicer and less stressful for everyone. Right. Um, okay. Thank you. Uh, so we have two minutes, and we have one more question. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and and read it. I uh, don't know if that's completely wise. Um, so, final question is: Do what is our take, or what do we think about situations in which contributors refuse to talk to the TC or to TC members? So, this has come up a few times in the past year. Um, the questioner specifically asks: Is it a constitutional problem or some other kind of problem? Um, but I mean, we know that it's an issue. Uh, does anyone, how, how would anyone like to answer that question? I would say, yeah, it, it's a problem and we don't have a good way of dealing with it. <laughs> and it leads to, it leads to some pretty fraught situations. Simon? So as a volunteer organization, we have, we have this big thing um, that keeps being repeated on mailing lists and so on that we can't force anyone to do any particular work. Um, you know, we can't and we shouldn't want to. Equally, um, we, uh, people in the project are kind of responsible for not blocking others who think it's more important from doing that work. And there's always a bit of a tension between that and the idea that, for instance, package maintainers in particular are the expert on their area and it's like their territory and in general they shouldn't be overruled right right um man uh we are out of time now and i'm 
I don't want to renege on my talk master responsibility to, <laughs> to end it. Um, perhaps I shouldn't have gone to that question. Anyway, I guess I suppose this is always something that can happen. Uh, there are a lot of valuable things raised in this talk, uh, I think, by people in the Jitsi call and on IRC and in the patch. So that's fantastic. We've definitely got some new material to perhaps finalize these proposals next time we have our monthly meeting. So thanks, everyone. Uh, and any more thoughts, you should feel free to get in touch. Uh, we've got IRC and mailing lists, private and public. Um, thanks, everyone. <laughs>